Hey guys, welcome to another theory of computation tutorial. Today we'll be looking at second example of DFA minimization. So let's get started. So this is the DFA that we are given and we have to minimize this DFA. All right. So let's first draw the transition table for this DFA. So we have got a starting state A. In starting state A, you get input zero, you go to state B. Then you get input one, you go to state C. Okay. What about state B? You get input zero, you go to state B itself. You get input one, you go to state D. Okay. What about state C? So you are in state C, you get input zero, you go to state B and you are in state C, you get input one, you go to state C itself. What about state D? You are in state D, you get input zero. Where do you go? You go to state B and you get input one, you go to state E. What about state E? You are in state E, that is the final state. You get input zero, you go to state B. And you are in state E, you get input one, you go to state C. So this is our transition table for our DFA. All right. Now with this transition table, we'll create minimization or we'll perform minimization by creating a minimized transition table. All right. So first we'll do is we'll write zero equivalence. So minimization through equivalence. So what is zero equivalence? We have to divide all these states in two groups, one group of final states and one group of non-final states. So as we can see, A, B, C, D, these are non-final states and E is the only final state. That's why I divided it into these two groups. Now, the one equivalence is you have to see based on the output, uh, which whether the output lies in the same group as the input or not. So what does that mean? So let's say, uh, let's use the pane. Okay, uh, green color. All right. So let's say we have to compare A and B and check whether they are one equivalent or not. So let's see our state A and state B. And when you get input zero in state A, you go to state B and in state B also you get input zero, you go to state B. What about input one? You get input one in state A, you go to state C and in state B, you go to state D. Now, are C and D part of the same group over here? No, C and D, sorry, A, C and D, they are part of the same group. So that's why on getting the inputs that is same input one, C and D are present in the same group. That's why A and B are one equivalent. A and B are one equivalent. What about A and C? So let's say you have got A and C. Uh, let's compare it directly here. Okay. So let's say you get input zero in C, you go to state B and you get input one, you go to state C. So is C and C and B and B part of the same group? Yes, it is part of this same set. So that's why A, B, C, these are what? One equivalent. What about D? We have to compare D now. So let's say D will compare it with C itself. Okay. So in D you get on input zero, you go to B and on input one, you go to state E. Now are C and E part of the same group? No, they are not because as you can see over here, C is in this set, E is in this set. That's why D is not part of this set. That's why D is not one equivalent with A, B, C. So you create a separate set for D and E was already present in the separate set only. Now we'll check for two equivalents. Now what is two equivalents? Same process will apply and we are going to compare them again. Okay, now, uh, just a second, yeah, okay, so two equivalence means we have to compare A and B. As we can see, A and B on getting zero, they are both having output as B and on getting input one, one is having C, one is having D. Now is C and D present over here in the same set? No, C and D are not present in the same set. That's why A and B are not two equivalents. That's why we create a new set for B over here, okay, and A and C are two equivalent. Why? Because they are getting the same outputs B and C in the same input. So for input zero, A and C are having same output B and for input one, both of them are having same output C. Okay. That's why A and C are two equivalent. Now we'll perform the same thing with three equivalents. We'll check for the same thing and we are going to get these three sets. So when we get two equivalents back to back same, then we stop over here. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll perform or we'll create a new transition table with these combined two states over here. That is A and C. We combine them and form a new state called AC. Okay. So first state is AC. In getting input zero in state AC, we are going to go to state B. Okay. And on getting input one, we are going to go to state C. But there is no such state as C. It is AC. That's why we write it as AC because we have combined A and C. What about state B? You get input zero, you go to state B. And on getting input one, you go to state D. What about state C? There is no state C. We have already written for state AC. Okay. Next is state D. On getting input zero, you go to state B. On getting input one, you go to state E. What about state E? You get input zero, you go to B. 
and you get input one you go to state c but there is no state c you go to state ac over here okay now based on this new transition table we'll draw our dfa diagram so we have got first starting state ac you get input zero you go to state b correct and you get input one you are going to state ac first part done what about state b you get input zero you go to state b itself you get input one you go to state d okay what about state d you get input zero you go to state b correct and you get input one you go to state e in state e what happens you get input zero you go to state b and you get input one you go to state ac so uh, this is how we minimize our dfa so i hope you got this concept if you have any queries feel free to ask me in the comment section below thank you very much